It's just nice because I get to be at home. Everyone always views me as just like a just normal Kiwi guy. He's just opened up the um, like the possibility for any of these kids to to make it now. Just allows me to be myself, as you said, and then just really relax. Cheers. Thank you. This was a kid who was coming basically from nothing. He actually took every challenge on and came home as, as a champion. The fact that he's actually playing the NBA gives, I guess, our kids the hope <laughs> that you know, there's, there's actually a possibility that, that they can do that. The numbers of young people taking basketball up as an option rather than the traditional rugby, uh, it's been pretty astronomical. We're lucky to have him, have Stephen just wandering around our city every now and then. And Kids identify with them and, and now they inspire to be the next Stephen Adams. One, one. So they're putting a little bit more effort into their game, uh, trainings, practices. Uh, we've got quite a few talented young players who are looking to follow in Stephen's uh, footsteps. He's really committed to the people here and he's very prideful. And I think that, I don't think you can, you can't, you can't fake that. Stephen's family and friends bring me in like I'm a part of the family. It's their culture. I think it's their coaches that they really look out for their family and it's all about family. The kids, they, especially the ones in New Zealand, they get overlooked um, and they don't actually get an opportunity like the one I had. So that's what I'm trying to give to them. It's just opportunities, just opening the gym every day for them to go work out, potentially get a scholarship to fall here in the States and then pretty much the rest is up to them. So we are here today, the lovely coast of Tauranga, <laughs> fishing for the tarakihi, a native fish to New Zealand. That's all I got. That's a pretty cool way to spend a <laughs> spend a day out with a, you know yeah. with a good group of people, and yeah, you know, he loves it. He loves it, just hanging around. We woke up what it was like six or seven in the morning. Uh, we went on we went on a nice nice boat. We had. We had enough room for like 10 or 10 or 12 people. So just coming back was just like, this point just a calm place, kind of recover. And yeah, just hang around good people, familiar people and just like get to be myself. Yeah, unfortunately uh, today is it's, uh, uh, first one's got to go back so... Uh, yeah, we got a small guy though. Want to help me out mate? <laughs> I caught one fish. It was like a goldfish and I had to throw it back. And everybody next to me, like right next, I mean right next to me, were pulling out fishes like this. You know, you, you can't not follow him because, I mean, mate, there's only four million people in the entire country, I mean, you know, and to have a kid, you know, another, another New Zealander in the NBA is just amazing. And so, of course, we all invest, you know, in, in, in him. Well, not all of us know him personally, but, you know, I mean, we all take a personal interest because as far as everyone, you know, in New Zealand is concerned, he's part of us. Take a photo. <laughs> we all need to be pushed as you know as hard as we can to succeed and to and to, and to you know be the best that we can be, and that's amazing. You know, and that's and th those are the things that we, we need to continue to do and just keep it positive and and you know encourage our kids and you know especially guys like Stephen. You know, I mean, I know, I know there's a lot of kids out there who look up to him. There is a lot of buzz and a lot more league passes circles. have been yeah, bought. Yeah, yeah. That's part of the world. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, um, and it's done. Yeah, basically have four million fans over here. He's just himself. He's just a, uh, there he is over there. He's fishing. I don't think he's caught any fish yet. Where's some music? It's just a part of us, bro. Everyone just wants to help each other out. There's no hidden agenda sort of thing. Everyone just like doesn't care. They just want to like just make sure that you're okay. And I got the same feel um, when I was in Oklahoma. That's what I said, like Oklahoma, just like New Zealanders, because they do the exact same thing. That's what yeah, made, made it easier for me in that transition. This is who he is a, as a person is and he's just, you know, relaxed and, and, you know, just wants to make the most of the time that he spends with his, with his friends and his family because obviously it's just him over there. Live action from the back of the boat. We're standing here with young Ben. He's got another one. Well, in fact, he's got a baby.
<laughs> mate, tell me, how do you feel about that rust about catching that fish, mate? Mate, bloody outstanding, I tell you. We went up to this big farm. We took a drive for about maybe, I'm gonna say like 45 minutes or something like that. They had it set up with different areas where it was skeet ball shooting. Everything's all here. Yeah. And usually they do one one by one with like one one um, machine, clover machine. They got six here, six there, and then they even got one here. One left, three's coming over the top. Okay, four first, and bird. That's me! Three, 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 three. That's me! Yeah. All day! Hey, that too. All day right? Off the rails! So Michael! Bang! Here it is. Oh no! Oh, they were having a ball. They're like big kids out there. They were having a ball. Here we go and rabbit. Oh, oh, my boy, my boy, my oh. boy. Here it is. And rabbit. Hey! Oh, I got the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ready to go? Because usually, like with these, you want to angle it here instead of like here. Fall off. So you go out these ones. Rest it on that. And then you pull back. We took a bus over to uh, uh, like a community center and then next to the community center was a house where I guess one of Steve's friends lived and that's where they had the, the hungi. It's just a traditional, um, traditional New Zealand way of cooking food. It's called a hangi. And uh, you pretty much just, it's pretty much just you dig a hole, you put in hot stones, and then food, and then you just cover it with dirt. But everything's already wrapped up, you just cover it with dirt, all the way to the top, like it is there. Pack it down, you just wait for four or five hours, eat it. So good, bro. Oh, so good. It's just an experience, like the, the smoke and the fear, and like, it's something that you don't see every day. So you really got to take pictures. I got a couple pictures of it myself, you know, that's something, that's something different. You don't do this for like, you can't do like a one meal thing. Like, oh, I think I'll have hangi tonight and just <laughs> make me a hangi. Like, you know what I mean? It has to be like a big family thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, get this, Steve. Steve, yep. Check out one of those things. There's plates behind you. The thing that the family is there, you got all types of um, different dishes, food, stuff like that. I think it reminds me of this is a, a family reunion on my part. Forty-five. All right. Forty-five minutes on the clock. Let's keep warming up real quick. Let's bring, do it up and down. You know, I get there, and we and, and we work on his game, work on the stuff that he's weak at. You know, work on his DHOs that he had to get better with. Work on his post moves that he's getting extremely comfortable with. And just another thing, just talking. Just over there, just talking the game. Here you go, Steve. In and out through the nail. Bang. Good. Nice, boy. Nice. In and out through the nail. In and out through the nail. There you go. Good job. Best. On one. Stop. And he's grown so much as far well as his knowledge of the game. He's got a lot more confidence on the box as far as being comfortable making his moves on the box. I just like the workout, man. I like just to progress and get better. It's just, just mastering the craft. That's all I really care about, really. He's gonna hit you. This guy's gonna suck in. Boom. You're gonna hit him, get to the post, and go to work. That's why I wake up every day and just like want to work out and stuff. It's just having that, I don't know, I'm not letting them down because they're putting in as much work as I am. They need to get up and work out with me and all that, so I can't let them down as well. We all just, I don't know, it's just like a big success, uh, group success, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Come on, come on! Middle, middle, middle. Oh, middle, 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 middle. Oh! 
Oh, yeah. Well, we had to do a speech on a famous New Zealander, and I like playing basketball. And so, as soon as I found out that Stephen Adams played basketball for New Zealand, it was really cool, and I wanted to like do my speech on him. Big smile. It was an explosion in terms of the youth. We had a lot of kids here now saying that they can do it, you know. And but they now seen there was a pathway. And the pathway was just not only bouncing the ball. It was really focusing on your education to try to get a scholarship to hope to get drafted. So their whole focus kind of changed. And I think it all changed for the good. I think it's really awesome. Like, inspires us to try and get out there and be in the NBA too. For me, it's a huge deal being able to see someone like Stephen Adams come through to our centre and that. Uh, it's definitely put the ASB arena on the map as somewhere for basketball players to come to. Uh, a lot of lot of young people that I see around, um, you know, they all representing Stephen Adams with the singlets, um, which is quite a good thing um, for me. It, it, it's a huge huge deal. Uh, idolise him a little bit, uh, just like Americans idolise, you know, Michael Jordan. For us, Stephen Adams is is that sort of go to guy for. Um, someone you idolise. I don't think Stephen will be the last one to leave our shores that could make the NBA. Stephen's give, been, been a, a great inspiration in that respect that he's hard working but um, he's also uh, in terms of education and his academy in terms of the basketball uh, there's a real push to um, make sure our young people recognise the importance of education that um, it's the basketball and the education go hand in hand and so um, it's a real positive. Good. Yeah. He had immediate uh, attention, I mean, people flock to get around him uh, when he's around town. Um, the camp we're holding here, um, it was sold out within a week. I admire that a lot about him. I think that also makes him a great fit with, with our organization, um, you know, for similar reasons in terms of, you know, the, the way we feel about representing Oklahoma City and Oklahoma as a whole. Um, but. He has a sincere, you know, appreciation and he wants, I think the other thing is he wants people to be exposed to New Zealand and to uh, his culture and um, it's been, uh, you know, I think it's been really healthy all the way around for, for everybody. At school, we could barely make a team three years ago and now I look at the bench and there are five or six kids sitting on the bench waiting for their turn to go on. It's, it's, it's been huge. People um, seem to relate really well to Stephen Adams. Um, and I think that's just his nature. Um, he's, he's approachable, he's friendly. What Stephen does is he just allows younger, especially kids here in New Zealand, to see that example and go, I can do it too. You know, I can. Yeah. If I really want to, I can. And that's the truth. We actually have people come into the pub to watch, want to watch basketball, um, you know, all the time. So it's on, it's on ESPN um, and it's always on our TVs now. Um, people are demanding it to be on. Um, and that's probably only happened over the last couple of years, you know, two to three years. And you'd have to put a lot of that, lot of that down to um, one individual like Stephen. But as the time went on, you start to see that these players start to develop. And for a seven-footer to be that athletic and that passionate, but more important, being able to deliver certain messages to kids that, you know, with hard work, this can be achieved is outstanding. It's, 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 it's like a, a storybook. I mean, you know, you, you couldn't create a movie that was better than this. Because at the end of the day, the kid really started from basically nothing and created everything in a very short period of time. And as we know, back in the United States, we all born with basketballs. You can go down to the local park and you can pick up games all the time. But over the years, it is extremely hard to even get into a gym here in New Zealand. But nowadays, they start to build newer facilities you know, you're getting better coaching, you're getting better administrators, you're getting better sponsorship come along, and a lot of it has to do with what Stephen has done. He's seven feet tall and just 17 years old, but Stephen Adams is being touted as our next big sporting star. Now he's heading for a scholarship in the States and hopefully the NBA. Steve has always been an open guy. You know, he's always been um, humorous. You know, I like to enjoy himself. Uh, but at, at the same time, as you know, there's, there's a lot of social problems that can happen in, in a lot of different families. You know, with him uh, losing his father, I think it was, it, was, it was a big blow to him. 
But as you know, basketball is a, is a situation where you can have an extended family. He had had some adversity in his life. Uh, he had had to come to a crossroads, you know, in his life and had to make significant decisions. There were, had been experiences, although he's never really talked about them. I believe that there had been experiences earlier in his schooling life where it just didn't fit. Either he didn't fit with the school or the school just weren't accommodating um, for his needs. He was stepping into some very unknown territory academically and, uh, and, and, and I think he found that a real challenge. Anybody who can work hard just need to be channeled in the right direction. But uh, the num number one challenge for him at that early stage was, was academics. I mean, he had his moments of self-doubt. There's no, there's no two ways about that. And that's where Glenda was probably pretty important because she was able to just sort of give him that quiet environment and get his feet back on the ground. It was up to me to earn his trust. And he was sitting on the seat out the front of the college. And I just sat down beside him. And he sort of harumphed and carried on like a normal teenager. And I just looked him in the eye and I said, just how badly do you want this? And then he was very quiet for a while. But it's one thing that he always reminds me of, is the one thing that I said to him, well, just how badly do you want it? I want it bad, miss. And I said, fine, well, this is the journey we have to take. Basketball is only going to take you so far. So for him to be able to get the scholarship, we had, a, had to come up with an agreement, number one, that uh, he had to go to school every day. You know, I mean, we had six o'clock in the morning trainings from six to, to eight, and then uh, I would drop him off at Scott's College, the school that he went to every morning to ensure that he was there. And once he learnt how to learn, it became easy for him. Now, basketball skewed his life, and he, he, and by his own admission, he was, you know, he, he said, you know, academics is a constant struggle. He said, I don't know why I can put all the effort into my basketball and do all that extra work, but I still find that difficulty in applying that same sort of perseverance and, and determination to, to the academics. This was a kid who was coming basically from nothing, who said to himself, to be able to make it, I have to become a student athlete, because that's what we preached. There's so not a lot of talk down in New Zealand about student athletes, because we don't have the NCAA system down there. You know, a lot of kids go professional too soon. But he wanted to get a scholarship. He wanted to learn. He enjoyed learning. And like I said, he took one step at a time and every step he took was, was a big step. He had had a lot of influential people that had helped him along the way. First time I met Stephen, uh, I was uh, taking a class for another teacher. It happened to be a, a maths exam. And uh, uh, the, the, some of the boys were uh, battlers when it came to maths and Stephen was there and he'd come totally unprepared for the exam. So uh, he was a few minutes late. He had no pens, no pencils, no calculator. Uh, he looked pretty scruffy, um, you know, boys can be boys. But uh, so we had to get him sorted out. And it was really, really funny to see because Stephen was a big boy. This was when he was about, uh, he would have been 14, 15 at the time in our year 10. And uh, one of the roughest boys in the class who was never organized himself stood up and said, sir, I've got everything Stephen needs. And out of his bag, he managed to pull everything Stephen. Stephen just sort of looked at him like, <laughs> and, uh, and, and he settled himself down and got going. I think his resilience and uh, his gratitude, um, and I, I, I don't think you can underestimate you know, his toughness. But yeah, he, he just got better and better academically. And in the end, he, he got over the line reasonably comfortably, uh, which was a real credit to him, because uh, he kept the focus. Uh, he listened and he, and he did the work. The first time I saw Stephen... First experience for me was... Um, probably my lingering memory is the hair. Just had hair down to his shoulders. Him looking very uncomfortable in a uniform, pulling his shirt. He was about six, seven. Oh, nothing fits. And the sleeves of the blazer coming up his arms. Then he had a dirty little moustache and long hair, dirty moustache and just looked rough, rough. <laughs> Trying very hard to look as though he fitted in but knowing that he didn't necessarily fit in. And I just remember looking at him and just being so intimidated and so scared. Everyone was like intimidated by me because like I didn't want to go. It was a, it was a height, a lot 
it was a lot for me. It was a big culture, yeah. culture change because I was used to just a different style and it was just seen upper class. I was at a um, different, well, at Scots College, so a different high school before then, and I was just looked like I had longer, longer than this. I was 13 years old, and he, they made him the guy who has to look after me and show me around the school. I was kind of given the task to be his mentor, I guess. Well, not mentor, but, you know, his buddy. I was playing in the, the, we had a junior team, like a junior basketball team, and I was, I was in that, um, and it was kind of like me and another guy were kind of co-captain, I guess, and I think they just kind of picked me as the, oh, yeah, you know, he's a basketballer, he, they're basically in the same classes, you know, it's, he can just, you know, show them around a little bit. So, yeah, I got grafted with that task. Um, <laughs> which was a bit of fun. It was definitely a bit of an eye-opener. But, um, yeah, obviously pretty glad it happened. I first met Pat uh, when, I, when I first enrolled to Scots College. The moment that we, we all kind of started walking into class together and he goes, oh, that's a nice textbook you've got there. Whack! Straight on the ground. And then, you know, turn around and punched him in the ribs and he, he t tells that story as well when he hit me and I was like, oh, damn, that kind of hurt. So I turned around and hit him back and then, he almost hit the floor and I think we both kind of were like, all right, well, mutual we, with mutual respect, we can, yeah. yeah. They just helped me be be a kid, if that makes sense, because I was, I was in a dark place. And so they just, I don't know, they kind of humanized me. We just know him for the guy that he is. and But, you know, at the same time, we respect what he's come from yeah. so much because it's, you know, it is, it is pretty incredible. There's a speech that he, he delivered in his last year. Yes, well, the first thing I knew about it was this apparition burst through the door. I was very proud of what he said in that uh, about himself and his journey. I'm not doing it. Fine, you're not doing it. What is it that we're not doing? He made it quite clear. When I came here, I didn't like you guys. <laughs> and all this came out about what he needed to do. Um, and I've got to talk for seven minutes. And so the speech started. Uh, please bear with me, this is my first time. Yes. <laughs> Not many of you probably thought twice about coming to Scots, but for me it was a life changing experience. And we talked for, oh, you know, a minute and a half, two minutes. I couldn't engage with the classes or the teachers, and I felt left out and lonely. Straight on, I, just, I, I don't like use. I couldn't relate to any of you. So. And then we added a bit more, and then we added a bit more. He shuffled the papers around. I couldn't imagine how much harder life was about to become. Now I had to really do school. It was one of the biggest obstacles I've had to overcome. But you could tell that he was going through the process. Matt Bertram had talked him through it as well. Look, focus, forget about your audience. You know what you're going to say, lift your head and deliver it. I know when you find something to motivate you, nothing is impossible. It helps you overcome anything, it really opens your eyes to the world. He delivered it. It was a bit rushed towards the very end, but the rest of it was good. The relationship um, is unique. Um, when I consider, you know, over 40 years of teaching, the different kids I've taught at different times, there are certain ones that stand out for, shall we say, a variety of different reasons. Um, in Stevens, it is that I've been privileged to have this amount of influence in someone's life, then great, that's fine. I'm only part of the jigsaw puzzle that makes what it is for Stephen. How he goes from here and how he repays the favours and what have you, that's entirely up to him. He's grateful that he had the opportunity for a second chance. Second chances don't all grow on trees and this is um, a unique college, an elite college, and he's achieved it. And he's come in a rough diamond and he's emerged as a polished stone.
start your day in a beautiful new home with Downey Designer Homes and Bunting and Camille on the breeze. Righto, good morning. Let's have a look and see what Tuesday holds. No frost this morning as such. We thought there might be, but no. Um, 14 degrees, mostly sunny, then a little bit of cloud drifting in. Stephen Adams, he's the bee's knees, mate. He is just the shiz. Yeah. He is unbelievable. And, and, and all these kids, they were wearing like Oklahoma City t-shirts and stuff. How much gear did that guy bring over? We got team, team on three. One, two, three. Two. Let's get it on. You know what I, I love about him is how real he is. And like, if you watch any interviews with him mm. and he and he, and he he talks to the camera or anything like that, he just owns who he is. And that's what's so cool about him hanging out with all these kids yeah. is that he's such a good, positive role model, even with his long hair and his big mustache. Go, 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 go. Go! Hello. Quickly, quickly, get up with your group. Get up with your group. Go, go. There's an organisation called Basketball Pathways that we've started up um, after going to Oklahoma last year. Um, we were inspired by that trip to basically come back to New Zealand and um, provide the pathways that Stephen has gone down. First and foremost, the things that come along um, the camp like this is it brings kids together from different um, you know, parts of the, of, of the city, different parts of the, of the country, um, and allows kids to, to kind of come together and uh, build relationships you know, with basketball as the, kind of the conduit. The response has been incredible. You've got kids coming out of the woodwork, travelling five or six hours to come to it. You've got, um, you know, something that happened within three days. You've got people, uh, town supporting it. Uh, yeah, it's just a, a swell. You know, and you can see it, by the way. If, if kids get to see him, they get excited. Nice, boy. Bit of speed. Shoot it. Stay balanced, boy. Stay balanced. The work that Steven's doing here is much greater than basketball. I think it's bringing you know, youth together. I think it's promoting physical fitness uh, and, and a healthy living. Uh, I think it's also um, promoting teamwork and, and learning from one another. What we've managed to do is get 50 deserving children that normally wouldn't be here. You know, They wouldn't have been able to you know, pay the gas to get here or they wouldn't have been able to afford the $65 registration fee but they're here today, you know, so that's, you know, that's part of what we want to do and that's, it's so pleasing, all those kids have come up and said thank you. Well, because I'm from a rural area, um, just get to learn a bit more from people with a lot of experience and yeah, it's pretty good so far. They're helping us with a lot of defence, on the ball, um, off the ball, dribbling and oh, like basic things like rolling and stuff, yeah. Okay, we're going to work on a two-man game, alright, a two-man game with the handoff. Stay low. Stay low. Stay low. Nice. Stay low. Stay low. Rebound. Oh! Good shot, boy. Oh! Good shot, boy. Oh, he's some good shooters. We got some shooters. Give me that. Oh! Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, work hard. Let's go. And we're very, very proud of him too because he's done extremely well by being who he is. So, you know, long may he rule um, in the NBA and uh, and what he's doing for the kids over here. He did one in Tauranga, did one in Wellington, one in Nelson, these kids' camps. You know, it's just it just shows what a cool guy he is. Let me see your crossover. How's your crossover? Let me see your crossover. You know, for him to have a, uh, uh, his first camp there and that many kids come, that was unbelievable. That is going to grow. I think they're going to have they're going to have a, a good turnaround as far as good kids coming. If they keeps doing this every year. I think they're going to be pretty good. Well, you, ca you can't really put it into words how the the community feel about it. You know, we've had um, we've had text messages and, and people sending us emails and and phone calls, and they, they just can't believe it. You know, because we don't get it here in New Zealand. It's a real um, privilege for us to have the NBA. Thunder, you know, you guys come over and, and Stephen, and you know, just to give back like he is, you know, it's not something that happens a lot, you know, so it's a really special event for us. That flight was a flight that I was not expecting. Why right? you could see the propellers and everything is tight, you can't stretch out. That's a flight I I, I don't care to take that anymore, anymore. But uh, but it was good though. We had everybody was on the flight, the coaches. And uh, everybody was only laughing and joking, but it was tight. It was very tight. Wellington. Wellington is obviously as the capital of New Zealand. It is. It's 
it's very diverse. Uh, the location of Wellington is is in the middle of the country, so we're at the bottom of the North Island. So in, in New Zealand we have two islands, the North Island and the South Island. It's right on the waterside. It caters to any type of person that you need. It's right in the middle of New Zealand, so it's a short flight to some mountains if you want to go that way. Um, go that way, or you could just walk up the small mountains that we have in Wellington. But everything is so compact, and it's the right balance of everything that you don't. Um, it never feels stressful to do stuff. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you know you're just like, ah, oh, I have to drive 30 minutes to get this place. You literally just like walk. You could take a five-minute bus ride to anywhere, and you're just fine anyway. Yeah, it's quality over there. It's amazing. So today uh, we're at camp here in Wellington. He's just opened up the um, like the possibility for any of these kids to, to make it now. Um, here, see Stephen Adams. He's seven foot, he plays in OKC Thunder. He's a New Zealander, it's, like, it's pretty hard to get into NBA being a New Zealander. I hope to learn how, to, um, how he plays his big position so I can learn from him and hopefully use that in my games that I play. It's really amazing and um, and also it's just so amazing that it keeps coming back and giving back to all the children and the kids here. I think for New Zealand it's really put it on the map. Playing down here at Scots College and going through to the States and the camps, um, it just makes a bigger exposure for New Zealand. Let's just have a good one fellas and yeah, ladies. <laughs> team, team on three. One, two, three. three. We've got about 200 kids. We just came back from Tauranga. We had a camp up there yesterday. Uh, we had about 400 kids up there to come and meet Stephen. There we go. Awesome. Thank you. What's up, bro? How are you? Good to see you. We can do a left hand layup. Make a layup. You can make a layup here. You guys know what a layup is? Oh. We're well, going to learn today what a layup is. Come on. Oh, God. Come on. Coming from um, you know our humble beginnings, and um, and doing really really great, and also not just really great sportsmen, but um, you know in terms of his uh, performance on the court, but his performance um, as an ambassador for the sport. You know, like every, every time he's interviewed, he always makes New Zealand proud. Yeah, so it's great. So really, it's about meeting the heroes. It's about meeting Stephen, um, and really just being inspired. Let's go, everybody up! Take a seat right here. The opportunity to have Sam come down and coach MB, um, I think is huge for these kids. And that, that's really never something that we've seen before in New Zealand. Then I'll have them flying in. Then I'll have them come. Boom. See how I'm jumping straight up and down. Over in Wellington, I've seen those kids last year, some of those kids last year, and they have improved. There's probably about 150 kids there, or something, and they have improved. And it was a joy that, you know, some of them came, up, came back up to me and said, hey, hey, hello, how you doing? You're back. And I enjoyed it. I seen one kid, he was like 6'3 when I went there. And then when I got back, he was like 6'5. We hope that uh, everybody is going to be taking that homework home, the basketball homework, practicing your shots, practicing your dribbles, listening to the things that the coach taught you today. We expect you to go home and, and, and work on them. And once again, more important, we expect to start tomorrow Think about the classroom. Think about your homework that you got to do in the, in the school. If you ever want to achieve things in life, you must be educated. Do we all understand that? Yeah. It's very simple. I just need everybody standing up. Right where you are, we ain't going to get all close and that. Put your hands up high in the air. We got a team, team on three. One, two, three. Yay. Eat your veggies. See you later. So I gave these uh, two kids uh, scholarships, um, academic scholarships to uh, the school I used to um, go to, which is Scots College um, for high school. And yeah, the reason I did it was just because they, um, I just wanted to make sure that they get the right education. How are you, mate? Keep smiling, boy. The core of it for him is um, just the gratitude that you know, uh, you know, he was given opportunities uh, at important times in his life. Uh, he's choosing to give back, which I think is certainly a sign of the type of person he is. He's very prideful, you know, about the scholarships. Uh, he obviously has uh, some recipients here at the camp today. I just want to follow in uh, Steve's footsteps. Like he's really been my idol over the last uh, couple years. Since he's made the NBA year, it's just something I want to do as well.
I want to inspire other kids in New Zealand and give some someone in New Zealand a scholarship to Scots. I think it's just another statement, you know, about you know the reasons why so many people admire Stephen, and um, he's a great representation of what we're looking to try to accomplish with the Thunder. He recognized himself. Um, as an age group. Here in New Zealand, it cost thousands and thousands of dollars to play for the country. And he was never able to play for New Zealand by the simple fact he couldn't afford it. And the reason he played in our program, because you know, we helped him out. We, we, we sell sausages, we've done everything. So we put everything in a big pot. So collectively, as a group, like I said, with the managers that we had and, and, and the people behind the scenes and administrators, we helped out the people who needed help. And so as soon as he made it, the first thing he wanted to do was, is put it right back into the kids. Their work ethic, they showed up um, just like, so I, I worked out since I was 13, um, woke up 6 a.m. every morning to work out before school, and then I'll work out after school. These kids, uh, these two, were the ones who did do the same. And so I just, it's literally just whoever shows up for that and I think they have uh, potential and they follow the right path, they do all the right things and I'll be like, hey, this, this guy's special because of his work ethic. He really wants to get better. And that's what both of them showed, passion, everything. Wake up six, come down here, shoot around from 6.30 to eight probably. And then school start 8.45, finish around 3.30. And then training from four to six. And then from six to about 10.30, I just study. It means a lot and getting good education from a good school. Really opened up my uh, doorways to um, like Steve, like they, what they did for Steve, It's really good. Well, he, he recognises it as a, as a really, really obvious pathway for talented sportsmen here. The education is uh, top of the line, and yeah, they just help a lot. Always uh, open to uh, tutoring sessions, which is great. Wake up 6, 15, 6 o'clock training one and a half hours and then get ready for school 8 30 bell go to the rooms and then through the 3 30 school finishes as an educator to, to give people a chance of a college education albeit they may not necessarily always finish their college education um, it, it's wonderful to see because it's opening doors that wouldn't otherwise exist and i guess if they end up only staying in the new zealand for, for want of basketball, um, they may not get those, those same opportunities. You know, Scots College coming through their, their program that they do the job um, very well. They take academics very seriously, which is exactly what we need. We don't need the basketball side. We could take care of basketball side. Um, it's just really academic focused. And then they also get a really good social life. They get good life skills there. I take biology, history, classical studies, um, math, English, and digital technology. So I've changed the title of it to Conflict and Compromise, okay, and Independent Study in Greek or Roman History because you guys are going to pick your own topics. I think just because it comes so natural to me that I understand that kids, they, especially the ones in New Zealand, they get overlooked um, and they don't actually get an opportunity like the one I had. So that's all I'm trying to give to them. It's just opportunities, just opening the gym every day for them to go work out, potentially get a scholarship for here in the States and then pretty much the rest is up to them academics yeah you know, we've been focusing on trying to create a lot of student athletes they are one of them and what we plan on doing over the next couple of years is pick up a few other ones but the journey continues and he will travel with those kids because he knows what it was like and and it's his way of repaying okay here I speak on behalf of the college yes it repays the college but it's also repaying people like Kenny um, his brother, his extended family, and anybody who's had real connection with him and has helped him along his way. Sure, basketball is, is high for him, but I think education is, is, up, is up at the top. And I think he wants to see those guys as far as growing their education over there in New Zealand, more than what basketball is concerned. New Zealand probably doesn't have that really well-established sort of alumni scholarship tradition um, and I think it's becoming a little bit more um, obvious in schools uh, like ours. Um, but Stephen's probably the youngest person 
that I've ever seen in a school who's given back in that way so publicly and so obviously. It's the Kiwi way, is, uh, there's what they, um, what they call is, it's just really trying to help out and not forgetting where you come from, that's, that's all it's based around. Um, yeah, so if, if someone so happens to like make it, um, then yeah, it would just, it wouldn't be expected, but like it's just um, the way they've grown up, it'd just be surprised if they, everyone would be surprised if they didn't give back. for 2013, the Commissioner of the NBA, Mr. David Stern. Welcome to the 2013 NBA Draft. I think the draft would have started about 11 o'clock New Zealand time in the morning. Yeah, I remember, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I was watching it. I was sitting we at home watched it, watching we, it. We watched it live, yeah. There was a little bit of hype starting to happen, and then when the draft kicked off, um, we would have had 30 to, or probably closer to 50 people coming in here to see what this uh, thing was all about. The pick is in now for Oklahoma City, 12th overall. Who's going to join Durant, Russell Westbrook in OKC? I remember vividly the first time I saw him play. It was in November of his freshman year against Detroit at Pitt. It was clear that he, um, he had like a physical rigor to him that made him um, someone we had to be aware of. When I saw him, I said, man, this is a big, thick kid and he can move and he's athletic and he's gentle when you when off the court and on the court is a, he's a different animal but off the court he's a great kid i looked at the list and i seen oklahoma city thunder at number 12 and i'm thinking man if you ever got a chance to go to okc you got kd you got russ you got the the whole community it's a great environment for a new zealander you know, because I think that that whole area fits him like a glove. When it got to number 11, because we sort of talked to him about it and he thought, oh, I'd, hopefully I can go here, blah, 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 and he hadn't gone yet. With the 12th pick in the 2013 NBA Draft, the Oklahoma City Thunder select Stephen Adams from Rotorua, New Zealand, and the University of Pittsburgh. I rang, I rang Pat, and we were on the phone, and he just, I'm pretty sure both of us just dropped our phones and just ran around, around our respective living rooms. Like We were just so happy for him and because he had worked so hard at it. You're wearing the New Zealand flag uh, on the inside of your shirt. What do you want to say to everybody back in uh, New Zealand? Uh, just, I don't know, just thank you for all the support, guys. And yeah, I'm pretty much doing it as a Kiwi, man, always. To go to the place that he wanted to, especially, you know, the Thunder, um, you know, he kind of saw that as something that he, he really liked, so, you know. Happy for him, yeah, big time. Profile that he's built up from from um, secondary school, college to what he's got to be recognised in a, such an important event was uh, yeah, it was quite unique, and I, I think it'll be a lot, something that a lot of people will remember as a sporting as a sporting moment for New Zealand. Stephen is one of those guys, man. That every year since I've been here, he's he's gotten better. Um, just his whole demeanor, uh, professionalism, just coming in every day and working. It feels like nothing uh, ever phases him, man. And, um, you know, if you, if you look at him and, and just, you know, uh, just see his personality, you would never know what he went through or, you know, that he has 20 brothers and sisters and, you know, he comes from all the way over to New Zealand. So, you know, he does a good job to, of adjusting and uh, adapting to who's around him. And uh, that makes him just a, uh, a fun soul, man. And uh, that makes for a great basketball player. Steven's a good friend of mine, and um, I think he's, uh, he's very funny, and um, he, he knows a lot about a lot of things for a young guy, and he's interested, and uh, you can have interesting conversations with him, and uh, he's just, he's, he's always up to learn new things, he's like learn how to play guitar, and he'll read about uh, European economy, whatever it is, he just wants to, he, he wants to know a lot more about everything, so he's a, I enjoy spending time with him. For Steven, I think he... He takes pride in where he comes from and his family and his tradition and, and what he stands for, uh, what New Zealand stands for. And I think uh, as a teammate and as a, a friend to him, you have to understand uh, who he is and what he's about and uh, what he brings to the table and um, you know where all his energy and his game and his passion comes from. The way you present yourself on what you're going to say is the biggest. And I think he's gotten better. You know, as I look and watch him, watch him play or watch it on practice, the way he goes about talking to guys now, he has grown tremendously. I think he feels like he had people that helped him out um, when, at a time when he really needed it. And uh, I think he recognizes that and wants to provide that for other kids. And 
uh, specifically uh, with basketball. It's, it's a sport over there that I think is gaining popularity and uh, he just he wants to give as many kids as he can the opportunity to do something something good like he was able to do. So uh, it's really impressive for a young guy to, to have that on his mind and, and to, to actually go out and execute it like he does. Everything that happens to him is an opportunity uh, to improve, uh, whether it's managing success or whether it's you know dem demonstrating resilience, you know in the face of adversity. All that is really just opportunity for someone like Stephen. And um, you know we have a, a tremendous amount of confidence in him, obviously um, because of who he is as a person and what he's demonstrated. C is for court. I watch where I am going. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <laughs> customers. Hello. Oh. Yeah, I know, I know. Who am I giving this to? Who's strong? Who's the strongest? Me. Are you? Oh, help her out. Can you get it? Both of you, both of you hold it. Yeah, there you go. Carry on, kids. Uh, from Gisborne, New Zealand. Right. We're here on vacation. We, our first part of our trip was to come and watch Stevie Adams play. Yeah. We, oh, we love watching uh, Stevie Adams play. I watch him in New Zealand. Probably Oklahoma. You know, no, no one really knew where he was going to go or what was going to happen, but all of a sudden someone had a team to follow. So everyone here all of a sudden um, had buy into a, to a team and they accepted it and they wanted to get involved in it and they want to be part of it. Um, and you, that's what you see around the kids now. You see a lot more merchandise wearing on kids. So, you know, they really, uh, they really brought into the into the occasion that uh, we now have an NBA player. Well, in terms of um, New Zealand giving o Oklahoma our son, and we're uh, very proud of him, and we're delighted to know after this visit just how well you are all taking care of him. Really important to us. Starting at centre, seven foot from New Zealand, number 12, Stephen Adams! New Zealand is so proud of him too. Just having that NBA presence is huge for us and huge for New Zealand. Yeah! <laughs> I think it humanizes me in some in some way, but uh, I think it yeah I think it's just um, I think it helps me mature faster because I understand the I guess the impact that I actually have um, on the country. So uh, I want to make sure that it's a very good one and that I leave a very good impression. And so. Hopefully the whole goal is that um, New Zealand then becomes a basketball um, country and all these kids get an opportunity to get a free education.